The Greenland ice sheet is the second largest body of ice in the world after Antarctica. Rising temperatures driven by climate change mean it's melting. Now scientists have managed to quantify how much and how fast, providing the most complete picture available to date, and it's a worrying one. Since 1992, Greenland has lost 3.8 trillion tonnes of ice, enough to raise global sea levels by 10.6 millimetres. And the rate of ice loss is speeding up too, from 33 billion tonnes per year in the 1990s to 254 billion tonnes per year at the moment. Earlier this morning, Japan decided to drop South Korea from its list of trusted trading partners, a move that could escalate already high tensions between Seoul and Tokyo. For more on this, we now connect our Kim Mogyeon at the News Center. Mogyeon, tell us more about Japan's announcement today. Yes, Chiyun, in a meeting held at Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's official residence at around 10 a.m., the Japanese cabinet decided to exclude South Korea from its whitelist of 27 countries given preferential treatment and trade procedures. Addressing reporters after the meeting, Japan's trade minister Hiroshige Seko said that Japan's cabinet passed an ordinance on excluding South Korea from its trade whitelist. As for the reasons, the minister stressed that the decision came as part of Japan's efforts to re-examine its management system claiming that South Korea is loose in its management of export controls. 1987, a historic agreement between the Soviet Union and the United States. President Mikhail Gorbachev and Ronald Reagan signed the INF Treaty, marking a change of course after decades of Cold War nuclear tension. The root of the tension was this, the Soviet SS-20 missile, a nuclear warhead that could strike Western Europe at short notice. That worried those European countries on the other side of the Iron Curtain, who were well within the missile's reach of five and a half thousand kilometers. The U.S. response was to deploy its own mid-range Pershing missiles in Europe. That was met with protests across the West. The demonstrations showed demand for a new direction. The result was the INF Treaty. It banned all ground-launched ballistic missiles with ranges of between 500 and 5,500 and kilometers. The Soviet Union got rid of 1,846 intermediate-range missiles, and the United States about half as many. By 1991, a total of 2,692 missiles were destroyed. Now President Donald Trump has officially withdrawn the U.S. from the treaty. Washington and its NATO allies say Russia has deployed new intermediate ground missiles that violate the INF's terms. Moscow, for its part, has also pulled out of the treaty, charging that Washington has breached the INF by setting up missile defense stations in Eastern Europe. Analysts worry a new Cold War-style arms race could be looming. The worst mass shooting in the United States in nearly two years. It took place at a Walmart store and the Cielo Vista shopping mall Saturday morning in El Paso, Texas. A 21-year-old male was arrested by police for the slaughter. The shooting took place on Saturday when the mall would be busiest. Particularly cruel, it's the week of back-to-school sales when parents bring their children to buy new clothes and supplies for the new school year ahead. Police asked for blood donations and hundreds heeded the call, with lines snaking outside the donation centers. So Turning now to the attack in Dayton, Ohio, today we got new information about the massive firepower the shooter brought to the scene. Now, police have not determined a motive for the shooting in which nine people were killed, including the gunman's sister. Dean Reynolds reports tonight on some new video of the attack. For 30 horrifying seconds as the masked gunman approached, firing his modified assault-style weapon early yesterday. <laughs> Newly released video shows panicked patrons screaming and taking cover in a nearby bar. Dressed in combat clothes and protected by an armored vest, Connor Betts had already killed people outside and was turning to enter the bar when police closed in and killed him. Well, it seems that uh, at 11.30, just after 11.30 p.m. last night, uh, a car was driving uh, the wrong way down a main thoroughfare in central Cairo. Uh, the Interior Ministry released a video showing the car moving the wrong way down the street slowly. 
Uh, it exits the frame, and then there's a large explosion uh, on the screen. Um, this is the, you know, the deadliest uh, attack in Cairo in more than two years, with uh, at least 20 people dead. Uh, the, the blast was quite large and damaged, uh, damaged the National Cancer Institute, which was uh, right in front uh, of the site of the accident. On August 5, 2019, the government of India scrapped a 70-year-old provision that had given special autonomy status to the state of Jammu and Kashmir, known as Article 370. This was the reaction. Kashmir has long been a point of contention between India and Pakistan. The state is divided between both countries, but both claim the region in its entirety. The tensions date back to 1947, when India gained independence from the British Empire and the princely state of Kashmir was free to decide which country to join, India or Pakistan. The ruler of Kashmir, Hindu Maharaja Hari Singh, initially opted to remain independent. But that didn't last very long. Following a Pakistani military invasion, he signed Kashmir over to India in return for military assistance, so long as the new state would retain its autonomy within the subcontinent. At U.S. and China, they're among over 20 countries expected to sign the Singapore Convention on Mediation here next week. The U.N. Treaty allows for the enforcement of cross-border mediated agreements, and it comes as a boost to Singapore's growing reputation as a dispute resolution hub. Russia now, and the Kremlin says it's winning the race to develop cutting-edge nuclear weapons, despite last week's mysterious explosion at a military testing site which killed at least five nuclear scientists. Now, following the blast, authorities ordered the evacuation of a village close to the accident site in northern Russia, only to cancel that order just hours later. Local officials had reported a spike in radiation levels in the area, while Russia's defense ministry said radiation levels were normal. The conflicting accounts are adding to the uncertainty surrounding the incident. Super Typhoon Lakima has caused widespread power outages and cancelled flights in China. The storm made landfall in the eastern province of Zijing early on Saturday morning, hours after the country issued a red alert. The wild weather carried wind gusts of more than 190 kilometres per hour. Electricity is being restored to around 550,000 households due to the storm. In Shanghai, more than 500 flights have been cancelled at two airports. Flights are expected to resume tomorrow. A rush for fuel that ended in tragedy. A fuel tanker had been heading from Dar es Salaam to Tanzania's capital, Dodoma, when it overturned close to a bus stop in the town of Morogoro. People came to take what they could. But then, disaster. Emergency workers tried to help those caught in the flames. For some, it was too late. What? Get out of there! Get out of there! People are burning. They say the fire truck is on the way. This is a big fire accident. People are burning alive. More than 140 people have been killed in severe monsoon floods and mudslides across western and southern India. The rains have forced hundreds of thousands of people to flee their homes. The worst hit states are Maharashtra, Karnataka and Kerala. It's a year now since Kerala suffered the worst ever flooding, which killed more than 200 people and displaced thousands more. Now our top story this evening, South Korea said it notified Japan of its plan to remove Tokyo from its list of trusted trading partners before the official announcement was made and that it's still open for talks if Japan is willing. South Korea's Minister of Trade, Industry and Energy's Hong Yun-mo posted a statement on its Facebook page today on Friday that the ministry had provided advance notification and an explanation of the measures to Tokyo. He added that South Korea is ready to engage with Tokyo if the Japanese government requires further discussion and clarification on the matter. Song said his ministry had once again requested its Japanese counterpart to explain its reasons for removing South Korea from its white list of preferential trading partners earlier this month. Thousands of protesters took over the main terminal at Hong Kong International Airport, causing authorities to cancel all departing flights. It's very frustrating and scary for some people. The biggest sit-in yet follows another weekend of violent clashes between anti-government protesters and police. 
riot police could be seen beating protesters with batons inside a Hong Kong subway station on Sunday. Officers reportedly shot this woman in the eye with a round of beanbag pellets. No Demonstrations were originally sparked by a proposed bill that would have allowed China to extradite people in Hong Kong to face criminal charges. The protests have since evolved to promote democracy and denounce police brutality. Investors waking up this morning to a recession warning from the bond market. Steve Leisman joins us now with more. And Steve, we were going to talk about the deficit, but obviously the conversation today has changed. Yeah, to a less expensive deficit, at least in part. But first, let me just do them. Everybody's up on the conversation. An inverted yield curve is where short-term bonds yield more than long-term bonds. It's supposed to be the other way around because investors want higher interest rates if they want to lend you money for a longer period of time. But the two-year and 10-year, well, bonds, they flipped this morning for the first time since 2007. And it's pretty tried and true. Recession warning, take a look, three inversions going back to 1985. Each one, those are the circled ones. Each one curtain raised a recession by anywhere from 13 to 17 months. Notice I did. And good afternoon. We come on the air at this hour because we are monitoring what has been a volatile day on Wall Street. The Dow set to close imminently. It's been down more than 700 points for much of the afternoon. You can see it's down 764 points right there right now. Investors have been rattled all day amid new signs of a possible recession ahead. In fact, one key bellwether on Wall Street, the 10-year Treasury note. The yield on that today, that 10-year note, dropped below the two-year yield. That's very rare. It's known as an inversion yield curve. And regardless of what it's called, that has preceded recessions many times before. Of course, Meanwhile, 15 civilians have been killed in a Russian airstrike in the northern Syrian province of Idlib. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights says the air raid targeted refugee camps in the town of Haas. It says six children were among the dead. The French Foreign Ministry has condemned the attack and called for an immediate end to the fighting in Idlib. Over the past week, the Syrian army has advanced towards the rebel stronghold of al Khon. From a wedding hall to hospital, this is the aftermath of a Saturday night celebration. A suicide bomber struck during a wedding in Afghanistan's capital killing scores of people. Iceland held a memorial today for the country's first glacier lost to climate change. This is what it looked like in 1986. And now today, the ice melted away after being frozen for 700 years. Riots have swept through eastern Indonesia with protesters burning buildings, clashing with police and blocking roads. West Papua's legislative building and a prison were also torched. Now, West Papua and uh, Papua provinces are in Indonesia's east, far east, so to speak. They've been home to a long-running separatist movement against the Indonesian government. Now, Papuans say Indonesia illegally annexed the territory in the 1960s. Those tensions were evident last week, nearly 3,000 kilometers away in Surabaya in central Indonesia. Here, more than 40 Papuan students were allegedly racially abused as police detained them during Indonesia's Independence Day celebrations. This set the stage for the latest protests. It was the middle of the night, but the streets of Atanara were illuminated with an eerie glow from the fires on hillsides all around the town. Some came out onto their balconies to watch the flames as they came ever closer to this community in the northwest of Gran Canaria. By the morning, it seemed the worst might be over, but high winds combined with high temperatures to reignite the flames. More than 200 firefighters have been brought in to help with the operation. By this afternoon, Gran Canaria Fire Brigade were tweeting, we are overwhelmed by the situation. Italy's Prime Minister announced he's stepping down. During a lengthy speech to the Italian Senate Tuesday, Giuseppe Conte said he would submit his resignation to the president later on. Conte also launched a scathing attack on Interior Minister Matteo Salvini. He said Salvini's decision to call for new elections and pull his support for the government was irresponsible, and he accused him of creating a new political crisis in order to advance his own interests. Conte's announcement preempted a confidence vote for the prime minister that Salvini had called for. A record number of wildfires scorching Brazil's Amazon. Just this year, more than 74,000 blazes consuming the lush rainforest. The number of fires up 84% from the same time last year. 
The burning of the world's largest tropical forest could have a major impact on global warming as the Amazon plays a huge role in countering climate change. Earlier this week, thick smoke blanketed the sky as far east as the Atlantic Ocean and the metropolis of Sao Paulo, turning midday into night. Two Israeli drones came down over a densely populated neighborhood in Beirut early on Sunday, causing damage to buildings. The event caused a national outcry in Lebanon, with Prime Minister Saad Hariri calling it an open attack on the country's sovereignty.